Hello, greetings, beloved. I am so thrilled to be coming to you and talking to you about a Lord and a Savior, Jesus Christ, who died for every one of us, that made a way that we could go to a place eternally that is wonderful and good and not tormenting. There's really a heaven and there's hell, and we're going to talk about that today. The God I know calls you beloved and he calls you his friend yes he calls us his friend in the word of god oh how i love my father in heaven and his son jesus christ that he sent to die for you and for me that we would have access to heaven eternally john 3 16 in the bible tells us this for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life, eternal life. Yes, the Bible tells us that. And God so loved the world, that means you, that means me, this whole world, that he sent his only son to die on a cross so that we could be saved and have access to a wonderful place forever. And there really is, beloved, a hell and a heaven, and both are eternal. Hell is full of torment eternally, and that is why Jesus died, so that you wouldn't have to go there. So you would not have to spend eternity there. It would break his heart. Romans 1.16, let me read this to you, in the Bible says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to what? Everyone who believes. And if you believe that salvation will come to you today, the gospel is the power of God to bring salvation. So this word of God, this Bible has power in it to bring salvation to you. Many people just um, excuse the Bible, the word of God, because they say, oh, that was just written by man. But no, it wasn't just written by man. It was inspired by the Holy Spirit, the same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead and quickens our mortal bodies. The gospel is the power. For in the gospel, it says in verse 17, Romans 1, verse 17, for in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. Righteousness that is by faith from first to last. Just as it is written, it says, the righteous will live by faith. Many people have a hard time believing in a God that they cannot see. But I ask you, do you believe in the wind? Do you see the wind? Many people would say, yes, I see the wind. But no, you do not see the wind. But you believe in the wind, even though you can't see it. You see the effects of the wind. You see things blowing. You see a hair blowing. You see leaves blowing on the ground. But you don't see the wind. So it's by faith that you believe in that wind. And it's by faith that you believe in a God that came and died on a cross, rose again, and is coming back to take you to heaven eternally. Jesus gave this example about the wind in John 3. I'm going to read this. Now, there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Because God was healing the sick and and, uh, people were getting set free from demonic activity in their life. Jesus replied, In verse 3 of John 3, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. No one. So unless you are born again, you can't see the kingdom of God. How can someone be born when they are old, Nicodemus asked. 
Surely they cannot enter the second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God now unless they are born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised, Jesus told him at my saying, you must be born again. And here's what we were talking about, about the wind in verse 8. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear it sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it's going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. Jesus died on a cross, sacrificed himself for you. There are many religions that sacrifice animals and people and babies to get closer to their God. They have to do this for their God to love them and to respond to them. But Jesus, the true and living God that sacrificed himself once and for all for you, he is the only way, truth, and life. Jesus Christ loves you and died and sacrificed for you once and for all. There's nothing you have to do but ask him for forgiveness and to come into your life. And we'll talk about that. It says it in the Bible. That's all you have to do, he says in 1 John 1, 9. Confess your sins, and he is faithful and just to forgive you your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. In other words, uh, just put you in right standing with God. And it says in the Bible, all you have to do is confess with your mouth. Believe in your heart. Let those two merge. And and. All you got to do, confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ was the son of the living God, that he really did die on a cross. He rose again and is going to come back to get you and you're saved. It says you're saved. Romans 10, 13 says this. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That's everyone. That's you. You are included in everyone. He loves you. He died for you. He wants your life today so that you won't spend eternity in a place of torment that is hell. He did not create hell for you. Romans 10, 9 and 10. I just uh, spoke that to you. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Simple as that. Verse 10, for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. And verse 11, as scripture says, anyone, anyone, that means you, beloved, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. And John 14, 6 says, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So the access to this eternal heaven, to this wonderful place, is only through Jesus Christ, only through Jesus. Man says there's many ways, but there isn't many ways. A good friend of mine said, a wonderful man of God said, what if somebody invited me for dinner? And they said, go down this road to this street to that street, and then you will end up at my house. But I decided to say, no, I'm going to take this road, that road, this way, that way. I'm going to be lost. I'm not going to end up at his house. And Jesus gave you a way as he died on the cross, and you will end up in heaven if you take that way, if you believe with your heart and confess with your mouth. There is a book of life. It's the Bible. There's a book of life in heaven, I mean, a book of life. Once someone is saved, their name, the Bible tells us that their name is written in that book of life. And the Bible says your name is recorded in heaven in Luke 10, 20. Revelations 2015 says anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. In other words, hell, hell eternally. And it's a torturous, horrible place. Meaning those who did not accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Your life could be required of you today. 
You do not know. And if you died without accepting the true and the living God, Jesus Christ, you will go to hell. I had served other gods and not one could do anything for me. Not one of them could ever do anything for me. But when I received Jesus Christ, I got peace and my body was healed. There was many things going on in my body, but when I received Jesus, Jesus healed me. And I knew that there was power in him because all those other false gods that I served had no power. You must make the choice while you are alive. You can't just say, oh, I'll, I'll do it uh, when, you know, I, you know, you pass on. No, you can't. Once your heart stops beating in your body, this, this physical heart, once your heart stops beating, you go to one place or the other. You die in the natural and you go to either heaven or hell. And I'm going to give you a story that proves that in the gospel of Jesus Christ in the Bible. Luke 16, 19 through 31. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus covered with sores and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Wasn't that sad? This rich man didn't take care of him. He longed to even eat what fell from this rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him into Abraham's side in heaven. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was in torment, he looked up and he saw Abraham far away with Lazarus. Have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in agony in this fire, in this tormenting place. But Abraham replied, son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things while Lazarus received bad things, but now he is comforted here and you are in agony. And besides all this, and this is why, besides all of this, it says, between us and you is a great chism. It has been set in place so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. So that proves that you have to make that choice when you are alive. Because otherwise, there's no way to get there. And Jesus answered, I mean, he answered him, sorry, in verse 27. Then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my family, for I have five brothers. Let him warm, warn them so that they will not also come to this place of torment. See, so he looked up. He could see in heaven. He's begging for uh, God to go warn, send Lazarus to warn his brothers so they don't come to that tormenting place. See, it's tormenting. And once your family or somebody dies and don't receive Jesus and they go to that place, they're probably begging that you won't come, but it's too late too, because look at the answer on this. He replied, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. No, Father Abraham, he said, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said to him, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced if someone raises from the dead, Jesus is real. He died on a cross and rose again and is coming back to take every one of us to heaven, beloved. And I am so excited and I want to go and I want you to go too. I want you to know that there's a loving Savior that died for you, that you don't have to do anything. He done it all for you. All you have to do is accept him. That's all. You just have to accept him as your Lord and Savior and believe that he's Christ, the son of the living God. There are many witnesses that he rose from the dead and is alive. First Corinthians 15, three, for what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, that he was buried and he was raised on the third day, according to scriptures and that he appeared to Cephas and then to 12. After that, he appeared to more than 
hundred of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also as to one abnormally born. He, there were so many witnesses that saw when Jesus rose from the dead. And back then, if you were dead more than three days, oh my goodness, they knew that if you was alive, then, then, then this truly was correct, it was truth, and that you were risen from the dead. For I am the least of the apostles and do not even deserve to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. This is Paul talking. Mark 16, 1, 7 says, when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, Salome brought spices so that they might go anoint Jesus' body. This is when Jesus, they had crucified him on the cross. He was in the tomb. They got up early to bring him spices. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb that they had put Jesus in. And they asked each other, who will roll away the stone to the entrance of the tomb? Because, oh my goodness, it was huge. But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? Hallelujah. But go tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. He told everybody as he came, I'm going to die on that cross, but I'm going to rise again. And uh, many didn't believe. But Jesus not only wants you to be saved, he wants you to be healed. He wants you to be healed. Matthew 9, 35 said, Jesus went through all the towns and villages. He's coming through your towns. He's coming through your villages right now. And he was teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. If you've got a disease and sickness, Jesus is here to heal it today. He loves you. He wants to heal you. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them. He sees the crowd. He sees you in the crowd and he's having compassion on you because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Jesus sees you in the crowd tonight, today, wherever you are, and he has compassion on you, beloved. Jesus wants to heal you today. You may have been sick for a very long time. And there was a woman with the issue of blood that it tells us about in the Bible for 12 years. And she had... Um, used all of her resources, went to all of her doctors, and she was pressing in the crowd and touched the hem of his garment and was instantly, instantly healed, instantly healed. God is so good. He loves you and he wants you to be saved. And all you got to do is say, Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart. I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart that Christ, you are the son of the living God, that you died on a cross for me. You sacrificed your life for me and I receive you into my life. You are now the Lord of my life. I am so thankful for you, Jesus. I believe you come into my life, change my life, heal my body. Just guide me, direct me, make me be all I was created to be. Let me fulfill destiny on this earth. I'm on this earth for a purpose. Jesus put you on this earth for a purpose. The Father God knew you in the womb. He, he, he set you apart. He called you. God is a faithful, good, good God. And you know, you have to have baptism. You know, the Bible talks of two baptisms and water baptism is very important after you've been saved. Jesus himself was um, saved, I mean baptized with water, Jesus himself. And uh, I, John the Baptist, he was um, the one baptizing with water. And uh, he even said in, um, oh, let's find this here. It's Mark, or no, it's Matthew, it's Matthew. Um, let's see, I just lost the scripture. Matthew three, I think it's 11. And this is John, I baptize you with water for repentance, but he who comes 
after me. There is one who is coming more powerful than I. I whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Right there it speaks of two baptisms. And Jesus himself in Matthew 3.16 was baptized by John. And the heavens were open and a dove ascended in. And, um, you know, you heard all three voices, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Son's being baptized. The Father says, this is my Son who I am well pleased. And the Spirit as a dove was on him as a sign. Oh, hallelujah. You need to be water baptized. It's very important. It's a sign of cleansing. The burial signifying, signifying death to the old life. And all that unbelief and purification from pollution of sin. It's very important to be baptized in the water in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And and just, it's such a good feeling too. You lay all that old behind and you come up new. Hallelujah. And then get filled with the Holy Spirit. Get baptized with the Holy Spirit and with fire, it says. With fire. You know, Jesus told us that it's expedient for me to go away because if I don't go away, the comforter can't come. The Holy Spirit can't come. And he knew that he had to go away. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father forever making intercession for us. That's what the Bible tells us. But the Holy Spirit is who he left. And he said the Holy Spirit is the one that will baptize you with fire, that fire that that uh, uh uh, burns out all those things that hinder you in your walk with him. And then that fire that gives you a fresh desire for him. It's an awesome baptism saturated with all of God. And it comes with your heavenly language, prayer language. Uh, it comes with some people call it speaking in tongues. I call it my 911 to God. And it, and, and it comes with your prayer language. Uh, one thing that really helped me when I got baptized in the Holy Spirit, I didn't understand the Word of God very well. But when I got baptized in the Holy Spirit and with fire, oh, the Word just opened up to me. And I understood it because Jesus said the Holy Spirit was the one that would lead and guide us into all truth. And that's why he went away and he left the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit we can trust we must acknowledge him. The Holy Spirit, if Jesus said he is good for you, he's the comforter, the counselor, the um, one who will lead and guide you into all truth, then, okay, he will always lead us back to the Father in Jesus. We don't have to worry about that because he leads and guides us into all truth. So he leads and guides into truth. That's why the word came as an understanding to me and alive to me because I was baptized in the Holy Spirit then the one who leads and guides me into all of this truth. See, beloved, you know, people keep saying, oh, again, that's just written by man. No, it's not written by man. It's inspired by the Holy Spirit. You know, how can, how can a Bible, this whole Bible was written within probably a 1600 year period. And the thing with the Bible is there's, um, how could somebody know all the way back here 500 years prior to something coming to pass in um, the New Testament. That was 500 years. And you have, just for an example, let me take a, an example in Isaiah 61, where it talks about the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he's anointed me. Well, he was talking about Jesus, the prophet Isaiah, right then. But that did not come to pass until Luke 4.18, when Jesus himself opened that scroll from Isaiah 61 and was standing in fulfillment, reading about himself. And beloved, you're standing in fulfillment today. You're standing in fulfillment. You're standing. You're, you're no longer. The proper environment, I tell people, is not in the Bible, in the, in the pages of this book. The proper environment for this word is in your heart. In your heart. It's written on your heart. And, um, and then God can breathe on that by the Holy Spirit and, and train you and teach you and, and guide you and lead you and counsel you and give you truth. And so, beloved, I pray you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today. I pray that you will run and get uh, water baptized and signifying all that old once you dunk 
under and come up fresh and new in the things of God. Let all that cleansing uh, and signifying death to the old life and resurrection to the new and uh, purification from pollution of sin. It just is such a powerful thing, water baptism and baptism of the Holy Spirit. So, you know, God wants to heal you. He wants to set you free today. He loves you so much. He loves you so much. He's got great plans for you. And there may be many of you sick in your body. There may be many of you hurting right now. Many of you oppressed, depressed. You may live in a land to where it is so hard and, and the things that you have to get through every day. But God wants a better life for you. He really, really does. And the only way that you will get it is if you believe by faith. Remember, we talked about the wind and you've got to believe God, even though you don't see God, it's by faith. And like I said, it's easy for you to believe the wind. You believe that there is wind. You see the effects of that wind and God shows you effects by his love, his kindness, his wisdom, his goodness, um, his mercy, all those wonderful things who he is. In Galatians 5.22, it says God is uh, joy, love, peace, gentleness, kindness, meekness, self-control, uh, patience. Against such, there's no law. There's no law. God is an amazing, wonderful God that loves you. And won't you, won't you go to somebody, let them know that you were saved today. Let them know you want to be water baptized. Let God heal you today. Believe that there's a true living God that died for you. I don't care what religion you are. There is a God right now that wants to come in and really rock your world and really love on you and really change everything, your whole circumstances. And I speak to every one of you that need healing in your body. And I command your body to come in line with the word of God. And that was whole. He created you whole. I command back problems to go. I command eyes to, to be opened. I command deaf ears to be opened. I command those eyes that are blind to see again. The lame to walk in Jesus' name. Father, fire God, Holy Spirit, God. Heal, touch, deliver, set free by the power of the blood of Jesus. By the power of the blood of Jesus, be healed. By the power of the blood of Jesus, be healed. Be healed. I speak to every muscle disease and I command you to leave their body right now in Jesus' name. Feet, I see feet. Straighten out in the name of Jesus. Straighten out in the name of Jesus. Nerves and muscles, be healed in Jesus' name. Fever, go. Fever, go. All you fevers, go in the mighty name of Jesus. Infections, go in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, he loves you. He loves you. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be saved, delivered, and set free, for he loves you. Oh, we love you too. Oh, beloved, I pray that something so changed in your life today and that you will never be the same in Jesus' name. Mwah!